Claro by Sonox is an EQ tool where you have three tabs which will let you EQ from very intuitively to very detailed, progressing with each tab. In this video you will learn how Claro sounds and works and if it can help you in your workflow. Hi, I'm Marlon. Sonox claims that Claro is clean and musical sounding. I agree with that and I can add that the plugin sounds very forgiving as well. This results in that no matter what setting you choose, the plugin will never sound harsh or out of place. Now to understand how the plugin works, we can best go through the three tabs on this plugin. The three tabs are basically a different interface or a different workflow for the same EQ. The produce tab will give you a very straightforward EQ method, not completely unlike having a bass, mid and treble dial on an amp. This will get you started very nicely. Fortunately it's way more flexible than just having a bass, mid and treble control. When you hover over one of the big dials, a circle with frequencies will show up. Click on any of them to select a frequency, and you can see the frequency slider up here also jumps. If you use this slider, you can set the frequency more precisely. Now when you go back to the big control and move up or down, you will boost or reduce the chosen frequency. And if you hop over to the tweak tab, you will see the EQ changes you have made in a more standard frequency display. What can help is the energy display. The brighter parts are more present. This will help you making better choices in boosting or reducing EQ. On top of the produce tab, Sonox has added handy descriptions of frequency areas. And I really dig that they have used both the thing you possibly want more, like warmth as well as the thing you want less like harshness. That simple inclusion will be very nice and helpful for the ones who are starting out in mixing. Going a bit more in depth, there are shelf type EQ switches for the low and high frequencies. The low shelf is a Pultec type of EQ, so it will boost around the frequency you have chosen, but also dips a little above that frequency to increase clarity in the low end. You can see that clearly in the tweak frequency display. On stereo audio tracks, you have the choice between tone, which is your normal EQ, and width. By selecting width, the color changes to purple and you have control over the stereo width of your audio. The audio display here on top will show hot spots in the audio, so where the audio can be wide or too wide. Just select the frequency as with tone and reduce or increase. Here you can get low-end mono compatibility easier and widen the high frequencies quickly. I showed the tweak tab already and let's dive in that tab right now. What has transferred over from the produce tab is the handy naming for frequency areas. But now there are more of them and also split into what you want to have less in your audio here below and that's where you want to cut EQ or where you want more of something and that's where you want to boost up here. Adding an EQ band is as simple as double clicking on the display and double clicking again will mute the frequency band. Now, right clicking on a frequency point will reveal a bunch of options. Five frequency band types and each band can be set to left, right, stereo, mid or side. This is of course only when you use the plugin on a stereo track and it has split when you can split a stereo frequency band into separate left and right frequency points which you then can adjust again in any way you want. Sonox has thought this through really well. 
there's a piano roll on top instead of a frequency display. In Sonic's point of view, this will let you use your ears more, which you can only support, and every frequency point will show the frequency anyway over here. At this spot, you can also adjust the bandwidth or Q. This can also be done by pressing Command or Control at the frequency point and dragging up and down, and you can set the steepness of every frequency band. Looking at these options in the Tweak tab, it's obvious for me that Sonox has taken a good look at how FabFilter Pro Q3 operates. And Claro is very similar to Pro Q3 in that. FabFilter Pro Q3 has a few options more and has the very handy dynamic EQ options. I need to mention the excellent auto gain. This takes in account how the frequency curve is of the original audio and bases its auto gain on that. So the loudness is always spot on and it's great when you do extreme EQ settings. It's also great when you automate EQ. The auto gain and EQ will work as a filter like this. So Claro is set up in a way that you start with the Produce tab and if you feel you need more tweaking you go in the cleverly named Tweak tab to adjust the EQ more. Now if you're happy with the EQ on one track you can go into the Mix tab. But not before I ask you to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell if you like this video so far. When you subscribe you will stay up to date on the latest new cool plugins which can help you in your workflow. Ok the Mix tab. On the left side you see every track you have Claro inserted on and here on the right you can select any two tracks of which you want to compare the EQ. So this is very flexible and doesn't require you to open up the plugin of the track you want to work on. You see the same EQ interface as on the Tweak tab with the exact same functionality. The whole idea of the Mix tab is to keep an eye on the energy display which is in between both the cues. Here you will see high energy or overlapping areas glow up. This could mean you need to EQ on either one of the tracks to reduce frequency overlapping. But keep in mind that overlapping or masking is not always a bad thing. It can make the sound thicker and add glue. But it can also make audio less defined. So like with all naming in this plugin, the overlapping can be good or need attention. The show menu here doesn't work for me in Cubase, except the tracks button. The buses and effects don't do anything for me. The auto gain can also be frozen. This is nice when you have found a sound you like, but need to dive in more but don't want any overall gain changes. One thing I miss in this plugin is an easy way to fully reset the EQ settings. You can go in the Tweak tab and manually delete frequency points, but an option to do a full reset is missing. For that I have simply saved a preset called Reset when nothing is happening and I can load that one in. So that can be a workaround. Many EQ plugins now also offer dynamic EQ and Claro would, in my opinion, also benefit from that. The handling of the plugin is excellent. Everything works and feels intuitive. Rescaling is done in the menu. The Tweak and Mix tab can also resize here. The Produce tab doesn't have that option and it's also not needed. The Claro plugin is good. It offers something I haven't seen on the plugin market yet and that is a very natural intuitive way of working with EQ. From simple and quick tone adjusting to extended EQ function and a clear insight on which frequencies can collide between tracks. It will actually let you learn as well on how you can improve your mixes with that functionality. Claro will be a 5 best plugins of 2021 contender for me. The plugin will retail for £99 with an introductory discount of 25% until December 1st. And I think that is worth every penny. Get the plugin using the link in the description below. The plugin in the video on screen will show you a very good measurement tool which will also improve your mixes. I'll see you in that.